Hey there folks, this is Greeny XI welcoming you right back to Let's Play Higurashi. This is episode 87. In last episode we kicked off the fifth arc, the first answer arc, and she almost escaping from a boarding school, which typical her, she's this big brash character, and this is how it's gonna go, I guess. Let's see how the rest of chapter one goes. I watched the school premises while waiting, but it looked like nothing strange was going on. The building was lit up, and the beautiful western style architecture made it hard to believe that it was a school. It should be armed with electrifying wires, searchlights, guard dogs, like the prison it is. I thought I'd experience a surge of school memories in a situation like this. But it didn't happen. She didn't like it that much, huh? That sort of thing only happens when you have good memories. I have no good memories of the school, so there's nothing to remember. But if I could pick a series of images to recall, it'd be the luxurious dinners we had every night. So my memories would be nothing but international cuisine, Japanese, Chinese, French, so on. What the hell? That's just too funny. I burst into laughter. Just remembers the food. <laughs> At that point I heard a car approaching. I crouched in the darkness. The plate number is the same as I was expecting. That's the car. I jumped out and rushed to the passenger side, then opened the door and got in. Oh, hello sir. Nice to see you. She on Sam. The driver was a man of early age. Early old age. <laughs> he'd, be, he'd be angry if he heard me say that though. He thinks he's still middle aged. Well, he don't look that old from the picture. He looked at my face and learned that I succeeded. He smiled. Ah, they feel so fresh. I want to eat a burger for a start. <laughs> I heard they serve excellent food in the school, but I suppose you were served nothing but gruel, eh? No way, dumbass. <laughs> I was just kidding. Step on the gas if you have time to laugh at me. As you wish. Hey, she got out. Because I really did, la really did laugh out loud. After telling me to buckle up, he accelerated. The cathedral-like school disappeared from the mirror in an instant. It disappeared so quick that I didn't have time for a surge of dinner memories. Goodbye, my lovely school days. Yeah, I'm going to fill my stomach with junk food from now on. I'll forever be free from the table man as you taught me. <laughs> Serves you right. Oh, that's quite nice, that red glow to it. As we drove, the scenery began to change. Soon we were surrounded by vast fields of crops and a few streetlights. Reminded me that this was just the countryside of Japan, not Europe. That picture doesn't look countryside-y. Or is that meant to be a field on the right? It looks like a wall to me. Mm, I don't know. You hungry? Would you like me to stop somewhere to eat? That's okay, I already ate. I lied. I'm actually a bit hungry. I didn't eat much at dinner to avoid slowing myself down with a full stomach. I appreciated Kasai's offer, but I didn't feel like taking the time to eat while we were still in enemy territory. It's late, so you'll find only vending machines at the highway rest stops. Oh, I've heard there are hamburger and Odin vending machines nowadays. Hmm? Huh? What the hell? Is that dispense a cup and the ingredients like a coffee vending machine? It's gross! <laughs> I don't think it's like that. It usually comes in a can. Uh, sorry. I can't stand canned food. Still? I thought you might have grown out of it. I haven't because I can't. Shut up. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because I chuckled. You must have been trying to help me relax. He isn't usually so talkative. I'm exhausted. I'm going to get some sleep. I'll do a recline this. Look for the lever on the lower left part of the seat. Can you find it? Oh, here it is. Here I go. Because I laughed again. Did I do something funny? No. It's just that the way you talked sounded like Mion san. <laughs> well, obviously. Mion and I are identical twins. We're perfect copies of each other. When I react to something, so will Mion. When Mion reacts to something in a certain situation, I'll react the same way. How's this? I believe she's fine. I only see her when I bring your father to the family councils. That's right, she doesn't live in her parents' home anymore. She's living with a hag in Hinamazawa now, isn't she? Mm -hmm. She moved into the main house around the same time you started going to that school. I responded with disinterest even though I was the one to ask about her in the first place. The main house is where Oyu, the current leader of the Sonsaki family, lives. Yeah, we know about Granny. That's my grandma, who I call a hag. But when we use the phrase, the main house, that usually means more than just a dwelling. What Kasai refers to is the same thing. Did she change? You mean Mion san? Yeah. I think she has to have changed if she's living so closely with the hag. Kasai chuckled yet again. He knows I hate my grandma. I haven't noticed any changes. She's still the Mion san, you know. What about me? Did I change? 
No, not at all. Because <laughs> I responded quickly with a smirk. I haven't seen him for a while though. It's not fun if he answers this quickly. I glared at him, then he burst out laughing. Ha! <laughs> you haven't changed at all. That's admirable since you've been in such a strict school for so long. That's true. Damn it. Laugh as much as you want. I'm going to sleep. There's a blanket in the back. Please make use of it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I grabbed the blanket and rolled up in it. I'm exhausted, but I can't go to sleep. It's strange. Or maybe not. I must be tired from the escape. It's just that I'm still feeling tense. So I have to declare it once again, if only to calm myself. I'm sleeping. I totally am. Alright, it's the third time you said that. <laughs> Do I have to give you permission to sleep? You're talking too much. I can't go to sleep if you don't quiet down. I apologise, Princess. I'll keep quiet now. <laughs> this interaction with Kasai reminded me of the old peaceful days in Okinamaya. Well, I don't really know if I can call those, o those days peaceful. We were in the middle of the damn protests back then, after all. We all united together, and now to think about it, we pulled a lot of pretty dangerous stunts. If the authorities ever found out what I did, I'd never escape going to juvie. Well, at least half the people in Hinamazawa would be off to prison. We didn't think of them as criminal acts, though. It was a war. Yeah, they were trying to stop their village being shut down and flooded. It might also have been a festival. A festival where every person in Hinamazawa joined together in protest. It was a struggle, but it was also fun. It was fun to throw stones at the SWAT team with everybody. It was fun to blind people and make them all bleed. <laughs> we hid ourselves in somebody's home when they chased after us. We'd even go crowd around the police station, demanding the release of our arrested comrades. When we snuck into the construction site and sabotaged it, it felt more like we were playing at war than conducting one. I got so excited back then. I felt united with my fellow members, even though they were strangers to me, and that memory warms my heart. Warms her cockles, it does. Yes, the way it felt back then was like helping everyone to carry a sacred pal palanquin through the village. I don't know what that word means. Getting all sweaty and exhausted together. Until we all collapsed face first on the ground and shared our excitement and cheers with unfamiliar faces over tea. I was just a kid back then. I remember accompanying young men who worked for my dad out to the village to do various bad things. That, that sounds very wrong. Leading men to do bad things. I was arrested a few times. It didn't feel any different, though, than when I was called to the teacher's office for forgetting my homework. The other villagers were furious about the damn project, but for those of us who were kids at the time, it's a pretty fun memory. All that came to a sudden end a few years ago. It wasn't only the power of the protest that ended the damn construction project. The Sonzaki family and my dad's organisation had worked secretly in the shadows. This is top secret information in the Sonzaki family, but... It said they may or may not have kidnapped the Minister of Construction's grandson. Yep, we saw that in the last arc with uh, Rika and... I can't quite remember his name now, but the journalist who went there. Journalist. <laughs> in order to blackmail him. The grandson was found a few days after the abduction. He was found in the mountains of Yaguchi. He didn't simply disappear, and he wasn't demoned away. That means some kind of deal was made secretly. A year after that, the dam construction plan was halted indefinitely. The police suspected the villagers' involvement and investigated, but they couldn't find any leads. The villagers never betrayed each other. They'd do anything to protect their fellow man. They fabricated fake alibis and fake evidence. It was easy to deceive the police. Yeah. <laughs> the car suddenly shook, snapping me out of it. It must have run over a bump or something. I suddenly realised my expression was a very happy one for some reason. Ah, memories. <laughs> I must be looking forward to going home. Shion-san, you awake? What is it? Would you like me to take you to the house in Nakanamaya? Where else would you be taking me? I answer straightforwardly with a frown. Kasai then also chose to reply straightforwardly. It was the family head who decided on your enrollment in St. Lucia. And you ran away from there. You do understand the situation you're in. The school the hag chose didn't fit me, that's all. Shion-san. I know, I know. Shut up. <laughs> As the head of the Sonsaki family, Hag's decisions are absolute. They're nothing like, say, the three-second rule. Worse, the decision to confine me to an academy far away from the Sonsaki family was made before I was even born. Shion was the name they gave me. My sister Mion has a character that means demon in her name. That was to signify that she's a successor of demons. 
In other words, she would be the successor to the Sonzaki family in its demonic bloodline. My name Shion has a character that means temple in it. This means that I was destined to take the veil, veil <laughs> and be confined in a temple. Thinking of that reminds me how much I hate this name of mine. For starters, the person known as Shion is an abominable being to the Sonzaki family. Because it meant the family had two heirs. I'd have to cite the countless historical examples to explain. It's easy to imagine how that could prove troublesome for succession. According to our long-held family traditions, one of the twins was to be strangled to death right after birth. Unbe unbelievable, isn't it? What that means is that I have to be grateful just to be alive and breathing to this day. Yeah. I heard the hag actually put her hands around my neck right after I was born. I don't know what exchange took place in that moment. Maybe some brave relative of mine managed to get her to stop. Or maybe she was in an extremely good mood that day. Then don't try to strangle me. <laughs> yeah. We're twins. There are no apparent differences between us. But the first one out of my mom's stomach was named Mion. And the second one drew the short straw and got named Shion. Everyone else was desperate to tell us apart. But we sisters just found that awfully ridiculous. There isn't any difference between us. No one could tell us apart. Even if we only swapped hats. I wondered why all the grown-ups were trying to see the differences. Well, our fun as twins didn't last forever. One day, they created an undeniable, clear distinction between Mion and Shion. Mion went to the main Sanzaki house to live with the hag and to learn how to become the successor, and I was to be confined at St. Lucia's. I have no objections to sister's inheritance. I used to be jealous, but now I feel that having to learn about and follow the traditions would just make me tired. I even feel so sorry for Mion. Too much responsibility, right? So I'm not going to be a threat to the family, even if I'm back in Anakamaya. Or Kinamaya. <laughs> but the hag doesn't seem to think that way. She thinks of me as some kind of evil omen, because she survived instead of being strangled. You know, That's why she sent her away, probably. That's why she wanted to keep me away from her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that doesn't matter to me. I don't want to see her face either. I don't care if she doesn't allow me to enter Hinema's hour. She can charge me 10,000 yen per step I take there. But I wanted to let me live in Akanamaya, where I grew up. When I was little, I was in Hinamazawa, but I don't remember it much, and I'm not very attached to it. I do have good memories of my elementary school days in Akanamaya. The town isn't very sophisticated, but I kind of like it there. If you go back to Akanamaya, somebody from the family will notice you, and then they'll report you to the main house. This just shows how Kasai and Shion get on, how their relationship is, where Kasai will help Shion, regardless of the trouble that he could get in with the Sonsaki family who he works for and everything. Are you worried the hag will hear about me? Yeah, that might be a problem. Hope you understand the situation. What, Kasai? You tell me to go back to that awful place? No, I'm not. What I'm trying to say is, you ought to know whether I'm prepared or not. I just hope you understand what might happen. Well, I know what you mean. You'd be held responsible for helping me escape if things go bad, right? Exactly. You should caress your pinky finger while you can, Kasai, before they take it away from you. Yeah, I remember in... It was the second arc, wasn't it? Where uh, they took Kaichi's fingernails. Or was it... No, Mion's fingernails. You should look forward to being rolled up in a futon mat and thrown to the Onigafuchi swamp in that case. <laughs> Maybe they'll send you to the torture room in the garden. I like all the references to past arcs coming in by there, in the torture parts. I heard there's a big torture room in the main Sonzaki house. I've never seen it though. I heard they used to torture and kill the enemies of the village in there. It's just awful really. I hope I don't end up as a victim of that place. Okay, okay. Everything's going to be alright. <laughs> you really resemble your mother. In the way you take chances, I mean. That's normal. She's my mom. <laughs> my dad and mom will be furious if they find out about my escape. I'm more afraid of them than of the hag. I don't want to go into the details, but my dad is part of the Yakuza. He's in charge of the organization which covers the Shishibon area. He's in a very important position. So is Kasai here. He's an old friend of dad who really trusts him. I don't know if this is true, but I heard Kasai used to be very aggressive, or he's gentle now. I also heard he has tons of scars. He was in charge of a few large areas, but after he was injured badly in a fight, he retired. Now he's my dad's consultant, aka a drinking buddy. <laughs> He was my caretaker in my childhood, and now I feel like he's my butler. At first I thought my dad asked him to supervise me, so I hated him. But in time I started to feel like he was on my side. This is just a hunch. 
I think Kasai used to be in love with my mom. My dad, mom, and Kasai were a love triangle. Though my dad took the lead in the end. Kasai couldn't leave my mom entirely, so he stayed around as my dad's friend. I can tell that from the way he acts, he's seen my mom in me. I think he's a new character, any to this arc. I don't think we've seen him before, but I might be wrong, he might have had a small part. That's why he says I look like my mom every now and then. Ken gave me the creeps at first, but he isn't a bad guy at all. He's actually pretty funny. I only found that out after I got used to him. So when I thought about escaping, I naturally turned to him. I contacted him in an early stage of my plan and arranged to meet him today. You could call him a conspirator. It's not surprising he's worried about my return to Okinamaya. Considering the rules and traditions, getting off his pinky finger isn't too far from reality. I might be rolled up in a futon mat in front of the swamp for real too. Even so, there's only one place for me to return. I go into Okinamaya and nowhere else. That's my hometown. This might be a kind of homesickness. I don't care what it looks like. I need a drink. Hold on. <laughs> me boiling you today. <laughs> so what are you going to do? The Sonosaki family is everywhere. Well, I'll lay low for now. If somebody sees me, I'll tell them I'm me on. <laughs> then what? Then after things calm down a little bit, I'll start talking to my closest relatives. I know they'll be on my side. I know some people who covered for me when I had a fight with my dad once. I see. You're trying to create a fake a company so that the Sonsaki main house will have to accept you later on. I'm not sure what fate accompli means. If it's exactly what was explained then, okay. <laughs> Hope that works. It will. There are many people who are opposed to the idea of enrolling me in that school. That decision was obviously made because of the hag's hatred toward me. Don't you agree, Kasai? Well, yes. I thought that decision was excessive. She couldn't make the right decision because she was suffering from menopause. <laughs> All the fuss around in the damn pot has drove her nuts. Kasai smiled. I couldn't go to sleep after all, even though I was rolled up in a blanket. Even though I told Kasai to shut up, I kept talking to him. <laughs> in time, I got tired of talking. As I could feel the car run smoothly on the highway, Kasai spoke to me again. But yeah, she's a proper firecracker, right? She on san Look. I was so tired that I ignored him. I wondered what he wanted me to look at, but I wasn't that interested. Yet I opened my eyes slightly and saw a sign quickly pass by. Because I probably wanted me to see that sign. It had an illustration of azale azaleas around the letter that said, Welcome to Shishibone City. My hometown's coming right up. Yay. Nearly there. Chapter 5 Miyakashi. I quite like that. Little intro thing. I like this music too. You can just about hear it. Shion Sonazaki. And she said she's going to make out that she's me on her first so that she doesn't get, doesn't get in trouble. Okay, she's going to be in it. Rena, Satoko, Mion, Rika. I'm sure Kaichi's not in it, but he must be. Unless it goes into the past a bit. Or oh, it does things a bit different than the manga. I don't know. Satoshi, Kurudu. A lot of the names we've seen already. Akane Sanzaki, that must be a mother, right? Do you think? I can't remember. But there we go. We're getting started. I'm really excited to get going, actually. We're finally going back to Hinamazawa after all this time. It's been a long time since the last arc. <laughs> it's obvious this was coming up. The break. <coughs> Excuse me. Will we get a tip this early on? Yeah. The notebook's beginning. Okay. Goodbye, sister. <laughs> it makes it sound like saying goodbye to Mion or Shion, but you know, you're saying it to the, the Catholic sisters of the school kind of thing. Okay, let's have a gander then. June 1982. Satoshi Hojo disappeared several days after the Watanagashi festival. There are three possible reasons for his disappearance. That's Satoko's brother, if you can't remember. <laughs> One possibility is that it was an accident. Dead bodies sometimes end up in irrigation channels a few months after hit and run incidents. But since the police did a thorough search of the area and hadn't found his body, this possibility seems small. The second possibility is a self-motivated disappearance. Satoshi-kun has been living in dire circumstances. 
His close friends actually heard him in play he might run away because of their evil uncle and auntie. Police thought he skipped town after killing his aunt. That seemed plausible, considering that aspect. But the police arrested another person for the murder, so this hypothesis might also be considered false. The last possibility is that he was involved in a series of mysterious deaths in Hinamazawa. It's also called the Curse of Oyashiro-sama. He fell victim to it and disappeared. Demoned away. Unless Oyashiro-sama's occult power is actually verified, this curse must be the act of humans. It's only natural to assume that Satoshi Kun was made to disappear by someone's will. So, the question is, whose? Possibilities are quite limited. The culprit is either a member of the Sonzaki family, a member of the three families, or one of their many relatives. The police can assume that easily. I need to think beyond that. Who did it? How did it happen? And why did it have to be done? Why did Satoshi Kun fall victim? What was the motive? Who gave out that order? Who actually did it? The mastermind, the culprit, and the truth. All are in reach of my grasp. Maybe I'll find them right behind my back. But even so, I can't reach any- everywhere. There are parts of my back I have to make an effort to reach, clenching my teeth and cracking my joints so that the tips of my fingers can barely touch them. I don't have that issue. I can touch anywhere on my back without problems. The truth is hidden in places like those. I'm right in this because I need to organise my thoughts and memories. Nobody will read it other than myself. If somebody does, that means that either I threw away, threw these notes away because I no longer needed them, or I fell victim to the curse of Oyashiro-sama in the middle of my attempt to solve the mystery. If it was the former, that's okay. But if it was the latter, please, I want you to help me. Please help this powerless young girl. Young girl? Who is it, though? Dunno, but that's the start of the notebook. We'll probably be reading more of that as the tips unlocked, you reckon? Let's check all tips a sec. I want to see if there are many tips to go. Oh, it's, it's not going to let you see, like, blank ones. To know how many there are. Anyways, I think that's about it for today. This has been Greeny XI. Hope you've enjoyed seeing Chapter 1, seeing the start of a brand new arc finally. Seeing how Shion is going to get her time in the spotlight after... I don't think she's had much time shown. She did a bit in Mion and Shion's one. Quite a bit, actually. But now she's going to be the main character, so... I think it's going to be good. Yeah. Thanks again for watching, folks. See you again in a bit.